Hi, welcome to my latest video. Well, this is going to be the follow-up video I mentioned recently on the Lenovo Mini or Tiny PC that I recently got. It's a renewed device, M93P, I believe, is the model, part of their Think Center line. And as you saw in the previous video, if you happen to see it, which I'll go ahead and you know you'll see a link to it at the end of this one, it is more powerful than I expected it to be. However, with only 128 gig of disk space, in this case an SSD that it has, which uh, I'll open it up and we'll see, but I believe the way I've read, it looks like it's a 2.5 inch SSD that goes through SATA. SATA 3, hopefully, <laughs> which means it will run faster, but I believe it is because of the performance that we saw last time. So we got only 128 gig of that, and it only has 8 gig of memory to it. So what I've decided to do is upgrade it. I went ahead and bought another SSD from Micro Center. It was on sale. I think I got this with tax and everything else for less than $60. It's one terabyte. So that'll make this thing a fairly, fairly robust computer that I could use for special purpose situations. Seeing how I can't get too many more Raspberry Pis anymore, this is a pretty good replacement for it. Well, in addition to that, I'm going, I went ahead and got another chunk of memory, actually two new so dims, which will raise the total memory space up to 16 gigabyte. So we'll see how that works out. I believe I got the right ones, but you never know until you put these in here. There weren't a lot of choices with DDR3 to choose from, 1600 megahertz according to the, the BIOS that I looked at. So it should work, but we'll find out. Also, I went ahead and got myself an adapter. This thing, there's an adapter from DisplayPort to HDMI. Now, I've bought these things in the past, and I've bought entire cables to them, and they didn't work out very well. But this one did. I was surprised. It works exactly, so I can get the higher resolution, the clearer picture out of this. And you'll notice that as I do the screen captures on this during the body of this video. Stick around to the end, and you'll see some new performance results. I'll go ahead and chart it against the previous results that I got from this. Don't expect a lot of change, because I'm not doing a CPU change or anything like that. But there might be. So we'll see. So let's get going. Okay, I have it all wired up now to uh, keyboard, mouse, Ethernet. I've also got the adapter here to allow for the conversion between DisplayPort and HDMI, and I'm capturing that HM HDMI. Now, I want to do a clone of the hard drive, or solid-state drive in this case. So what I have here is a Cronus. This is an actual boot disk for the rescue of a Cronus. I'm going to go ahead and put that into this end USB port here and then I'm going to go ahead and power it on and see if I can get it to boot from that USB. I'll have to hit F12 on this particular PC in order for that to function. So let's try it. Okay, I'm hitting F12. Okay, it went into, let's do an alternate boot here. So I'm going to arrow down to use the U disk, and we'll see what happens. There we go. We went right into the Acronis. The font's kind of small, but it is up and running. So before I go ahead and start it, well, let me get it started. I'll hit one, and now it's booting up. I will then put the secondary hard drive, or solid state drive, I keep getting that wrong. I'm going to go ahead and put it through this adapter that allows me to put the drive onto the PC. So it'll be able to see both, and I can then clone the one that's in here over to this one. Let's see how that works. Let me open this drive up and get it out. One terabyte drive. Put this on here on this adapter I have. And I'll connect this one up to the front port. USB 3.0. Okay, let's see if it sees it. I'm now going to go into Tools and Utilities. I'm going to pick Clone Disk, tell it to automatically sense it. It's looking for the source disk, which I'm going to pick as disk 1 in this case, the 128 that only shows 119.2. Pick that. It's thinking about things, and now it wants to know where am I going to clone it over to. And I want to clone it over to disk 3. It now sees disk 3, the Sabrent, 1 terabyte, 953.9 gigabytes, and we'll see what happens here. 
it's telling me what's going to happen from an empty empty drive to one that'll have you know a small amount of space used on it because we don't have that much space installed on this proceed now it is cloning It said this was successful. Turn off the computer, remove the source drive, turn on the computer. It's telling me now to swap drives around. So let me go ahead and just uh, turn off the drive, turn off the whole PC here. I'll hit this and see what happens. It should turn shut off. Okay, let's disconnect all of this. And then we'll start taking it apart. Okay, I'm gonna unplug it and make sure that we have no power applied to it. I'll take off the connector from here as well. The rest of this I can leave. Now there's a single screw that's in the back that you have to remove to remove the cover. So it's right over here. So you just get this one out. There we go. Make sure you don't lose your screws. Okay. It's already starting to slip off. It sort of slips off to the front like this. And then you lift it up from the back. And there it is. The cover is off. And now we can get inside here and start working on the uh, PC itself. Now I have the drive that I copied over to sitting right here, still connected. I'll disconnect it from this connector. And hopefully when we get this in here, it'll boot up. But with this one, all cloned. I'm going to do one thing at a time. So I'll do the drive first, just for orderly sake and make sure I didn't break anything. You have to disconnect this connector, that, and then there's two screws that hold the drive holder in. There's one over here and one over here, these two black screws. So we'll take these off. Make sure you don't lose any of them. And then this is supposed to slide this way. You see these little slots here? So if we sort of push it sideways, it should come out the whole thing. Now be careful because the antenna is here and the antenna wire is running over to the back over here to the actual chip that is the wireless connector. So we want to make sure we don't interfere with that. You could bother, you could take this all off if you want, but I'm not going to. I'm going to be very careful. Just flip it over, leave the wire connected here, and we'll take the drive out. Looks like it has two screws, so I'll take that out. One here, and one here. They're through some grommets, so I'll just sort of save it on the side here as I get the drive off. The drive should pop right off now. And there we go. There's the SSD drive. So hopefully it matches up. Put this over here. I see the memory back here. That'll do that next. These should match up pretty much. Yep. Looks like they do match up. So we should be good. So then I want to put this back in here like this. I want to line up the holes and put those two screws back in. Put one here and one here through the grommets. The grommets are for vibration. It doesn't really matter much for solid state, but I guess you could also put a regular hard drive in here if you wanted. Let me tighten this one up before I forget. Threads hopefully match. Well, it looks like it does match. I'm gonna find the one that went in here though. There it is, it fell out over here. That'll go through this grommet. Just snug, doesn't have to be tight. This thing is not gonna be taking roller coaster rides. Make sure that this thing, the wire is back to the way it's supposed to be. It's sort of intertwined with connectors here. So I'm gonna keep it that way. That's for the wireless antenna. And I wanna get it back in place here. And then this should just sort of snap in place again. Let's see. Oh, it's got to come high a little bit. There we go. There we go. That's one side and the other. There we go. It's locked in place. Now I got to put those two black screws back. As I've said in many of my videos, it helps to have magnetic screwdrivers. That's one. Now I'm going to be taking this out again to get to the memory, but I won't be removing the hard drive then. And it should just sort of pop right in here like this. And it does. Now what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to power it on with the cover off. There are many models of this, by the way, if you look at the manuals that are online for it. 
Some of them have a little switch here that prevents you from turning it on if, if the case is open, but this one doesn't, so it should work fine. Let me go ahead now and see if I can uh, capture that. I'll hit the power button, little button right over here. Oops, it would help to plug it back in again at the wall and over here. Let's try it again. And there it is. Look, there are lights that came on. Now, why those lights don't go through to the front, I'm not 100% sure. It seems to be a unique case option. And look, the fan just started. So it is coming up. Let's see if we get started here. And there it is, it came up. So we're into Windows now. Okay, that's good. Let's see what we get here. Let me log in. Good sign so far. And it looks like we're in. Let's see if it sees the larger disk. Or do I have to resize it? Wouldn't be surprised if I have to resize it. This PC. And it sees a 915 gigabyte with very little of it used. So I don't have to resize it. It automatically took care of it. So now we're running on the new one terabyte drive. So I think we're successful on this. I can open it up. I can see different things. And I'll do a performance thing at the, at the later end of it. We'll see if that's any different in terms of performance. Let me shut it down and we'll go for the memory. Well, that worked fine. So now let me go for the memory. Let me upgrade that and see what happens here. I'll start by unplugging it like we did before. So that we have no power associated with it anywhere. I'm gonna have to pull this one out again, the hard drive out again, or a solid state drive. And we'll have to get to the memory modules that are underneath it. So I gotta take out these two screws again. I didn't really tighten them that tight because I know it's gonna be back in there. Let me make it a little easier if I have this disconnected here. The drive itself. I'll shift this over and pop it out again. This time I'll just lay it over the top like that. And here are the two memory modules. Let me open these guys up. The new DDR3, I have to cut into this, I guess, yep. So now I gotta take these out, just like a laptop. You have to pull these little levers over to the side to pop it up out of place. And then you sort of just wiggle it out. Then you can do the bottom one. Same deal. And then we'll put the new ones in. Start with the bottom one. It has to go in on like a 45 degree slant. Push them into the socket and then you push them down until they latch in place. Then we'll do the top one, 45 degree. Push it in, push it down. I'll bring the hard drive or solid state drive back into place here. There we go, it was easier the second time. Wow, a lot easier. Let me screw it down and see what happens. Cross our fingers that this memory is compatible. That's always a risk with laptops and I'm considering this like a laptop at this point. And then we'll put the drive back on. Okay, it powered on before, so it hopefully it powers on again. We put the power on it and we'll see what happens here. Let me power it on again. There's a light, looking good. And I see Lenovo, that's a good sign. Let's see what we get, does it come up okay? See it again, I have to see it two times as I recall. I'm waiting for the wheel, there's the wheel. So Windows is starting. That is a very good sign. And there we are, we're into Windows. Wow, log in. Okay, we should have some memory now, let's see what the if the memory says what size memory do we have now let me run the utility program to check this see what it looks like cpu z 64 bit what do we got for memory now it sees 16 gigabytes dual channel and it sees the right speed and everything associated with it so there we are we now have 16 gigabytes of memory running on this little PC, or as they call it, the tiny PC, and I'll close it up. Let me go ahead and run some performance tests now. I'll skip through it because it'll same ones that I ran before, but I'll put up charts at the end here. Okay, that works good for now. Let me put the cover back on. 
So it's been shut down. I'll turn the power off. I'll pull, unplug the power just to make sure it doesn't get in the way. I will take the cover and place it back in position. It sort of has to go like this. And then it slides back. And then I have that single screw that has to go in the back here. So I'll put that guy on. So now it's all secured and I can go through and do some performance tests on it now. Well, that upgrade worked out extremely well. Now I have a PC that I can use for a lot of different things, you know, and it's not a Pi, so it can function with modern software, whether that be Windows or Windows Server, which I might load on it, or possibly also uh, just go with Linux. I'll see how it goes. It's now got one terabyte of disk space in it. Could even partition it, make it dual bootable, I'm sure, as well, with Linux and Windows. So there's a lot of options to this. And since it draws so little power, and I'll mention that in a minute, it can be sitting powered on within my rack continuously. Now let me show you some of the charts that came out of the performance and measurements of this device after and before I upgraded it. In this first chart, I'm showing what happened with Cinebench. Now, there really wasn't any improvement. Matter of fact, there was a slight decrease in the performance by about three quarters of 1%, well within the margin of error and nothing to worry about. So I'd basically say that the actual CPU performance did not change whatsoever, which sort of makes sense. I mean, it was possible that the memory, the additional memory might run a little bit faster, but you can never guarantee that, especially with Windows. Now in the second chart, I'm showing something that is phenomenal. The, the difference in performance of the SSD. Remember, before I upgraded it at 128 gig, and now it has one terabyte in it. And look at that performance it actually dramatically improved in terms of read and phenomenally improved in terms of write. Those numbers are just unbelievable. So I think from that aspect alone, this system has gone up maybe 20 to 30% faster just because of the speed that it has. What I also did is I double checked the power consumption from the utility line. And I think I might have mentioned in the first video that it only had uh, 120 or 130 watts drawn at maximum. Well, I redid it and that must have been a fluke because I did not see that this time. I ran it again right before I upgraded it and it pretty much was fairly steady at about 42 and a half watts being drawn. After the upgrade, I was expecting the worst, maybe picking up 10 or 12 watts, but that didn't happen. It was only an additional watt of uh, power being drawn from the utility line that is being used by the extra performance and the extra memory, for example, which is where I thought it was going to be at. So anyway, I think it went extremely well and I'm very happy with this and hopefully you got something out of this video as well.